on another seamount. Uh, likely a fast turnaround uh, like we did yesterday, uh, turning around in four hours and then diving again. Cool, cool. Oh, this person uh, missed what was going on with the uh, metal plate. Uh, so that's just ballast uh, that Hercules dropped because it was getting a little heavy. Um, so it's a steel plate uh, made of hemp rope. Um, we didn't drop it purposely to grow uh, as, a growth plat as a growth platform for later samplings, uh, but it it is made out of those materials so that it can uh, degrade. Two-year-old, is the you pronounce it, Colton? Hi, Colton. Um, he wants to come. Well, come aboard uh, when you're old enough. I, I think you might have to be 18. Can you slide this down a little bit, please? Then you might be on board, too. Thanks. Our exploration for Colton is uh, we're off the coast of Hawaii, um, about 160-ish miles away from uh, Kauai. So we're in warm waters exploring an unnamed seamount, so we just call it Seamount D because it does not have a name yet. All right, we are getting ready for watch change. So uh, if you don't hear us talking, that is because we are changing out from the next watch. Um, until then, uh, we are going to enjoy some of these uh, corals and sponges that we're seeing here. This is a unbranched bamboo coral. Possibly a bathygorgia. All the polyps are on one side. I see an S1 clade bamboo coral. That's that yellow one. You see in the background, um, there are others, some other bamboo corals that are internodally branching, looks like. Oh, Colton's parents said that we have made his morning. No problem, Colton. Tune in as often as you can.
Test one, two. Loud and clear. Yeah, sure thing. Thank you, sir. Oh my gosh, we're almost to the top. Well, I had to leave the van in order to get to the top. <laughs> Good morning, viewers. 8 to 12 shift is here. Keep sending your questions to the chat. Check, check. Got you there, Renny. <laughs> so Adam, you settled in back there. Yep. Yeah, we're paused right now. Yeah, let's talk over this. Wow, what a great place to pause. Yeah. Very cool. It's uh, totally s clade bamboo. <laughs> woo woo! I don't know that. <laughs> but... But it looks like it, of course. It's like Escalade. Yeah. Cadillac. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you want to know where we want to go? Yeah, we want to know. Oh. Let me zoom out a couple yeah. clicks here. So we are... about 400 meters from the summit, a little less. Uh, all right, so I think that we don't want to lateral too much because there are probably really steep walls here. Okay. So up the axis of that ridge right in front of us. Yeah. This one? Yeah. Okay. Go straight up. Straight up. All right. Um, we've got uh, about two hours if we're going to be on deck at uh, noon. But I don't know if that's a hard. I don't think that's a hard okay. stop. So. so if we see cool stuff, we can. Okay. We will continue and we'll go up at... Uh, Let's go zero seven zero. Zero seven zero, Reg. Yeah. Bridge nav. Good morning. Can we step one hundred meters bearing zero seven zero speed zero point two knots? Our next uh, target you. depth for a rock is 1785. Is that a black coral there? It looks like one, yeah. yeah. Are you getting your IDs more dialed in there? Is I know. Mm -hmm. Adam? <laughs> oh, and a uh, oct coral. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick zoom here, Dave. Then I'll get set up to boogie. That is a black coral. Looks like. Oh, well, it's got the pink one, oh. I guess. Maybe, oh, maybe bathy pathy. Mm -hmm. I think that one's different. Look at that uh, crab on it. <laughs> yeah. We collected some of this coral and one of those crabs last expedition. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wide there, please, Dave. All right, I'll get myself along. Now, what's the one with the real yellow stalk there? Hmm. I think that might be an S-clade bamboo coral. 
<laughs> I think they're all Lesley. Lesley. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm actually serious about that. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I right. think you have ruined it. Go ahead and we got in Wes Watling chiming in about okay. a I four clade candelabra. Ah. Go ahead and push oh no, that's the one up top though. Oh. oh, that's pretty. Take a quick look at this guy. Back me up, science chat. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got? What is that shrimp. shrimp doing? It's really excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's. Or it's <laughs> like. It's doing water aerobics. Yeah. There we go, little buddy. That's a bamboo coral, though? Or what's the. Uh, no, it's not, because the node. It does, yeah. It is a bamboo coral. Oh. Oh, why they're pretty stays. But. Jake, you want to come to zero seven zero, please? Good morning, viewers. Eight to twelve is ready to go. Keep sending your questions in. My name is Lisa. I will be sharing your questions out with our team. These are faster than normal. Seems all right, though. It's a bit less resolved. About a rock question, Adam. Sure. In a rock things. So one of our viewers says, compared to yesterday, yesterday's rock seemed smooth and rounded, and not really. They weren't seeing the angularity of the rocks that we're seeing now, or the cracks. And you have any comments about that? Yeah, well, I haven't quite got a sense for what we're on right now, just because we're gonna just start looking, but. Uh, one thing to pay attention to is how far away we are when we when we see them. So if we got closer, I bet these would look a little bit rounded as well. But I think that what I've seen so far, uh, this kind of looks like fragmental material that's been welded together with the manganese crust. Um, I'm gonna we'll swing back to that question once we get a good look at the at the rocks on this watch. Sounds good. We have a viewer commenting that it must be really weird to try to stay awake or get enough sleep when you're working four on, eight off. But you just kind of fall into the rhythm here. Yeah, the key is a nap. A good nap during the day. Yeah, power know. naps. Yeah. As many sleeps as possible. I've actually been staying up late and getting up early to do classroom ship to shore interactions as well. So I really rely on those power naps. <laughs> I've already taught four classes this morning. Gonna come down a little bit there, Jake, please. And I'll hold off here once we get up onto the wall. Lisa, any international audience or international um, classes you taught this morning? Not today, all in the US, but one was super cool. It was a Marine Academy pre like College Prep Marine Academy for high school students in New Jersey. That was awesome. Oh, interesting. Great opportunity for those students. Yeah. And I think all the others this morning were elementary. They're always fun. 
Randy, could you take a navigator question? Sure. Um, one of our viewers asked, how do you keep GPS track of the ROV coordinates? Assuming saltwater blocks signals, how is that done? Yeah, so we, um, we do have GPS for the ship, uh, but GPS doesn't work underwater. The, obviously, the satellites don't. There's re not receivers that could pick up satellites underwater. Um, so we have a uh, acoustic positioning system um, where we have uh, kind of an array of listening transducers tra called a transceiver um, that are able to listen to um, chirps, pings that we send from our beacons so that we have a beacon on each vehicle and uh, we're able to interrogate them, ask them to send a sound. They, when they do, that transceiver is able to uh, receive the sound and assess the range and bearing from the ship to, I think that's a Metallagorgia there on the left. Let's take a look. Um, yeah, and um, using a phase difference of the wavelengths received can kind of triangulate the position. Um, so we have now a position relative to the ship. We have a ship's uh, MRU, Motion Reference Unit, that we're able to... Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please, Dave. ...know where the ship was in space when it received that and kind of uh, calculate where on the seafloor the vehicles are in relation to the ship. Yeah, that looks like Metallagorgia, I think. Maybe. Yeah, I think you're right. And uh, um, we then pair those do a bit of math and pair those measurements with the ship's GPS, and now we can have the, the uh, latitude and longitude of the vehicles on the seafloor. Great. Thank you for that explanation. Sure. Come a little wide there, Dave. I know they've seen it before, but this is the first time on this cruise we've seen. I've seen Metallagorgia. That's the one we're looking at right now? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. What'd you call it? Metallagorgia. Oh. Go look at it in the lab. Yeah, that was the bonus sample, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Pull wide there, please. It's so delicate looking. Yeah. Come up on that delta bit there, Jake. Oh. Am I arranging in here a bit there, Jake, too, on the sub bottom? Thanks. What's that down to 50 now? Okay, 50. now I'm going to look at these angular rocks. They are more angular. Adam, could you talk about the kind of rocks you're looking for? Yeah, so we're, you know, at some level, we're kind of happy with, with any rocks, right? We want rocks that contain fresh, unaltered uh, volcanic material that we can use to look at the geochemistry of the magma and potentially uh, conduct some age dating using radiometric techniques, uh, but we're also interested in the stuff, the manganese crust on the outside of the rocks uh, to understand its composition, especially its rare metal concentrations, um, 
and how they vary with the properties of the seawater around them, especially oxygen content. There's some suggestion from you know, the previous expedition that rocks that are angular like this might contain more fresh, unaltered material. Uh, that may be the case. You know, especially smaller, rounded rocks could be just entirely crust and rather than uh, any fresh rock inside. These rocks are, you know, kind of the angular type that people were talking Go about. They piece, also Dave. don't look quite as uh, this is our crusted. Wow, look at that. Our friend, uh, I think it's a paragorger with the zoanthids yeah. and the oh, wow. uh, snake star on it, which is almost exactly what we saw last cruise. Yeah. Very similar coverage and it kind of was curious if it's if the zoanthids are in the middle of their takeover or if they're kind of somehow agreeing to be half and half hmm. all right oh right there please dave thank you wow that's fancy. And the distance between the two green dots is 10 centimeters, and they allow us to get an idea of the size of objects we're looking at. And one of our viewers is asking if we think they're bioluminescent organisms at this depth. Well, we saw those tenophores. Yeah. And we were looking at their reflected light, but someone suggested that most tenophores have some bioluminescence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, bioluminescent stuff down here, but yeah, we still see it with our lights on. With the, because there's no light, People are using, uh, or people, <laughs> animals are using bioluminescence to signal each other or to search for mates. I think we'd have trouble seeing it even with our lights off. The cameras are not particularly sensitive in, in, in very low light. Is that right, Dave? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, basically, you got to have some light to make a picture. Morning to our viewer in Seattle and Norway. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please, Dave. Stalked red crinoid and that anemone on the right? Yeah, it's weird that it's on the rock, though. You normally see those in the sediments. It could be a cup coral. Yeah. You want to see it's the cup coral, too, guys? Yeah. Right, you're oh, the color white. is amazing. All right, Dave, go ahead and push on in there, please. Let's see what you are. Uh, it's a cup coral. Is it? Yeah, it could be. I like it's an anemone. I have no idea. Don't know. I don't like it when you guys fight like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't, I can't see the base or anything. So oh, I, I, don't, I don't think we'll be able to. But yeah. The, like, head up. the radial pattern there that looks hard behind it, I would oh. guess it could be a cup coral. But Do sure cup corals have a kind of specified number of little arms on their polyps? I don't know that. I'm sure there's a lot of furious biologists typing into this <laughs> nice chat right now. Osco believes it could be coral. 
Nice. It's a balmy 2.27 degrees where cool. we are right now. Oh. Is that um, is the there, CTD temp on her? Is that a bit of purple? Or am I just, is that just a video? Where are you looking? The bottom right. Is that? Oh, in the cocoa? Um, I already might have to go though. No, that's fine. Whatever you got. One of our viewers asked if the camera angle, uh, based on the camera angle, they can't really tell if we're following a flat seafloor or a wall or a slope. Oh, we're definitely up on a wall here. Yeah, yeah, right now it's a wall. Yeah. Dave, can you put the sonars on the uh, feed to the web? All right, so on channel three, of the quad, we have um, our two scanning sonars on uh, Argus and Hercules. We have Argus here on the left and Hercules on the right. Those red rings at the center, this is where the vehicle is, where the sonar is essentially, which is mounted on the vehicle. And the red rings on Argus, which is the one on the left, are 20 meters division. So that rep represents 100 meters out and then the divisions on Hercules are 10 meters out. And uh, where you see darkness, that's that's not receiving anything, but where you see at first the dark blue and then into the warmer yellow and pink colors um, here, that represents it's that the sound is reflecting off of a surface. And so in Argus, we can see we have this wall that we're approaching. So for up on both of these screens is vehicle forward. So we're kind of heading towards this wall-like feature. It's about 20, 30 meters out on Argus, which is above Hercules. And then Hercules, as you can see, is pretty close to the wall, which makes sense from our camera feed. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you. It's one of our favorite tools to use. <laughs> it's very useful to not slam into stuff. One of our yeah. viewers mentioned corals can also be bioluminescent. And I had a conversation with Megan about this, and she was telling me that they use that as an escape. So, for example, if a sea star bites it, um, it could attract a fish with that little bioluminescence, <laughs> and then a fish could eat the sea star. So that's pretty nifty. Oh, neat. Huh. That's very clever. Yeah. Yeah, I guess otherwise you'd just be a sitting duck down there. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Pretty things are pretty healthy up here. Yeah, it's looking pretty happy, this colony. I do think that those yellow ones are escalate bamboo. Just getting my clades one clade at a time. <laughs> yeah. I need to change my salutation to good evening, Norway. <laughs> A little off on the clock. <laughs> Hello to our viewer in Brazil. Is that a picnic going out there? Oh, yeah, it is. What is that? Picnic going at Close favorite. your eyes, oh. Sarah. Dang it. <laughs> I think so. All right, describe it to me. I'm not going to watch the screen. <laughs> I have to take an observation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just for to do, go ahead and push on in there a bit, please, Dave. We don't, go, we won't go all the way in on this picnic on it, you know. Oh what I mean? yeah. But we just want to take a look at his long legs, legs for days. Very cool. Sea spider. Sea spider. Yeah, I think maybe if we don't call it a spider, I'm okay. Picnic on it, yeah. To yeah. be technical about it. <laughs> These little corals here. The coral Go people ahead, reviewing please. this video later are just like, I can't believe you. <laughs> oh, why, please, that. Dave? <laughs> That's why Megan turns the sound off. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't know what their what their <laughs> reasoning was. I think you're right about the S clade. Yes. Just based on like the little printout back here I have. You know, we all put our clades on one leg at a time, just like <laughs> everyone else. <laughs> That made so little sense <laughs> <laughs> that I'm going to allow it. It's actually um, 
<laughs> it's like a call back to earlier you're like I do my clades one at a time. Uh, it's like that made me think of it and then I just, then it, just put I couldn't let that. it go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Interesting. Now you're explaining your jokes, Adam. Yeah. I know. <laughs> oh. It's uh, only 8.25 a.m. <laughs> I just totally sandoval that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wow. <laughs> so much shade being Ouch. fired from the back row right now. <laughs> Ouch. You and I said last night, I will turn this puppy around. <laughs> We're going to anchor ourselves to the seafloor. <laughs> go ahead and push out in there, please, Dave. We will go down slope. No <laughs> we will, will go down anything. slope. Do I need to stop the ROV? <laughs> <laughs> this looks like a primnoid, I think. Uh, Megan no, was mentioning they they saw bamboo. these. These are the lyre or lyre sh shaped ones. I think yeah. it's the... Um, Nodal branching. It's Isididae if it's the shape. Yeah. You want to come a little wider, Dave? I clayed of some kind. Get a better I shot for you guys. Bamboo from Usco. Yeah. So you can see the branching right at the node. The black bamboo node. Are there any bamboo sections on the Main inner stuff. branches? On the what? Like the the branches after the the um, node. Yeah, they're definitely oh. harder to see, but yeah. I would guess. I don't know. Can't tell. I would guess yes if I had Can't to tell guess because the there's some either. there's some oh, branching the off the like inner it. branches. Yeah. Did we have a guess oh. on ID here? I think this is the Isadella. I clade. I'm with Sarah. Mm -hmm. I clade bamboo. All right, one more clade to go. <laughs> oh, Candelabra I four clade. I four. It's not just the letter. Ugh. There's a number too. They're, <laughs> they're really just messing with us. Every year there's a new thing that I gotta remember. <laughs> Pretty sure could could it's be I four omega. <laughs> I four. Mark six. Mark six. Oh, definitely a mark six. I'm not convinced it's I four. Could be Bridge eye. nav. Hey Sarah, how many large rocks do one we have? One more step, you 100 are? meters, uh, bearing 070. Thank you. It's hard to tell from these notes, not many sizes. Might be a slight pause there, is it? Sure thing. Oh, this is funny. By a second or so. I don't think we have that many physical. large ones, um, depending on what you define as large. Like 20, 15 to 20 centimeters, we've got a couple. Go ahead and push on in here, please. Is Dave. that the road Rhodorigorgia? Oh. Because. Oh, wow. It looks like. Wow. That one right there? Looks awesome. Like fireworks. Holy cow. R R H O D Rhodorigorgia. This is the one that when you stepped out and Steve came in, we sampled. Ah. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, I see the, you kind of see the uh, Ritagorgia mm -hmm. corkscrew on some of them, yeah. Yeah. Could be wrong, though. Can you kill the lasers for a moment? Oh. Uh, I'll go back down. See the stock in there, too. Rodanaritagorgia. Rodanaritagorgia. Rodan Rodan Got a syllable. That's the one. <laughs> Is the axis, can you tell if they're spiraled? Because in the Rodanaritagorgia, they should be wavy instead of spiraled. Yeah, it looks pretty kinked that. and wavy yeah. there. Okay. Yeah, I can't tell if it's a, not the main branch, but the little individual ones oh the individual ones look rotation -y. yeah they look spiraled yeah Kinda. yeah it's really hard to tell it depends that go ahead and come full angle. white there please dave looks wavy i don't know what else we got over here wow we got one of them purple crinoids on that yellow mm -hmm. guy there's a uh, looks like some 
hydrozoa on this possibly esclade bamboo coral, the yellow thing. It's a flashy little spot. Yeah. The two lasers are 10 centimeters apart. Go ahead and push in a bit on this guy here, Dave. Yeah, big old stock down there. Looks like there's two different corals on here. No, I think yeah, it could just cool. be one covered in a stoloniferous octocoral, maybe. Oh. It, I can't tell if it's two organisms. Uh, can, you, can you show the base? See if it's coming out of the same thing or if it's two different. Let's take a look. Looks like it's the same organism. So I think that the one in the foreground is as a colonizing an octocoral that's taken over the original, but I, I could be wrong. You can see some yellowish underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. I think it could be stolen at first octocoral. Oh, huh, interesting. All right, full wide there, please, Dave. All right, I'll keep uh, moving. Roger. Imagine if our trees were that bright yellow color. You know, That'd be cool. Be fantastic. Come to the northeast in the fall. That is true. That's a very good point, actually. <laughs> 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 Never mind. <laughs> the bar. Branches, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the bar, yeah. <laughs> You're right, I had to explain my joke. It's a stand of all joke. <laughs> <laughs> I see how this goes. I'm thinking too much time in Southern California. There you go, exactly. Imagine if our palm trees were this color. There you go. <laughs> see what I did there? <laughs> this is a Southern California joke now. <laughs> A viewer wants to know if anyone tried to get an ID on the huh coral at the end of our shift on the hot oh. sponge. Uh, on the hot sponge? I, yeah, it took Steve yeah, it approximately four and a half seconds <laughs> <laughs> from, uh, from my description. And it was the only thing that, that uh, I'm fishing on their part saved so our pride a little bit is he said that one is, um, what did he describe it as? It takes a lot of different forms, but it has a bit of a <laughs> mitten shape to it. Um, oh, okay. Oh, I could see that. It's just it was more elongated. Yeah. So he he knew exactly what it was. This is a big bamboo coral. Yeah, it is a big puppy. Steve agreed that it was likely stoloniferans on uh, on that other coral we saw. Yes. <laughs> Steve, st I'm, can I be your student, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> All right, pull wide there, please. That's Steve. a hard no from Steve. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to head up slope now. As we get towards the top, it looks like it'll be pretty flat up there. But we'll see what kind of rocky outcrops there are. We had a question from a viewer. Um, how do the corals have such bright colors, or why, since it's so deep and there's no light where they're living? And we asked Steve that question, and he said that that may be an indication that they have bioactive compounds that could deter predators, and the colors just part of that because he was telling us that when they put them in ethanol for preservation that color comes out really quickly but then for other species the color is actually part of the skeleton Most unusual human object we've come across on this 
expedition. Flip flop? I think so. <laughs> Chocolate One cups. yellow flip flop. <laughs> yeah, that looks like a pretty steep. ROV pilots, can one of you take a question? Sure. Sure. Our viewers want to know, how is Hercules so stable? Uh, we separate the motion of the ship from the motion of the vehicles. Um, yeah, so Argus is the big weight that separates the ship moves from um, Hercules' ability to fly around. Um, and the tether between Argus and Herc is very soft. Sorry, guys, I'm just gonna have to actually get over a little bit of a harder return. Yeah, it's just a steep prominence here. We wanna avoid. There's also a um, lot put into the design of Hercules mm -hmm. into keeping like the center of gravity low, and the center of buoyancy high. Which, which makes it a very stable vehicle. So you have the big foam pack on top that keeps it buoyant. And then we um, have a lot of our heavier components down lower towards the bottom part of the vehicle. And that adds extra stability. Keeps it from rolling and pitching a lot. What's that? I think we're clear of it now. Yeah, so the the rock we're looking at here look like massive flows. So one thing this could be is we mentioned we saw a lot of pillows as we come up the slope, but sometimes the interior of those pillow flows are, uh, you know, kind of massive areas of molten uh, lava that cools slowly and makes a, kind of a homogeneous mound of lava without a lot of the structure you see on the on the surface flows. Wow. Another cool colony here. That is a wide top to this friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool if trees also had a wide top? <laughs> <laughs> In yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, that was totally uncalled for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Adam. <laughs> Good callback, though. <laughs> I've got an disturbed. <laughs> interesting video slash ROV question. Um, one of our viewers says, what AUV or ROV would provide the most stable video platform for telepresence in shallow water where there are minor waves not far above the, v the vessel? Uh, there are some benthic crawlers that actually sit on the seafloor. And I think in an environment like that, that might be your best bet for the most stable platform. Water tractor. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Holy cow, it's a forest up wow. there. Yeah. But not many sponges. Mm. Oh, so observation. A couple in the background. All very small though. Yeah. No. And unstock. I wonder if it's if the currents are high enough up here, which we've been observing. I don't know if they are at the moment, but that would not support some of the stru the sponge structures. They seem like they would not really make it. Mm. Wow. 
Les Watling suggests biggest J clade ever. Nice. Wow. Can you feel a current, Jess? Uh, not really too much current right now. Unless I go over this ridge here and get blown into the corals, then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that yeah, happens. Yeah, you can see some particles, but that's also partly we're moving along. Oh, look at the size of that aridic gorge as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. Do a partial in here, Dave. So they're saying that this, what we're currently looking at, is it J-clade, or was that the one that was overhanging? Uh, or overhanging. Yeah, or they're possibly both J-clade. Possibly both. Polyps are closed here. Branch in the back is open. <laughs> Brittle star in the back. <laughs> Brittle star. <laughs> no. <laughs> Still going. <laughs> Now's my chance to be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> the epitome of photobombing, I think. Gonna come forward there, and I'll just give a little spin around this guy once more. Putting down the observations. Photobombing star. Photobombing brittle star. <laughs> star. <laughs> I don't know if Steve's watching, but I've been seeing these smaller colonies that look like yellow Plexorids. I want to know if he's been seeing that too, or if I'm wrong about. I that. saw the. I know the ones you're talking about, but I don't know if they're plexorids. Yeah. We've been blinded by the big stuff. We have a Hercules question. How far do Hercules lights go, and do you have something like a high beam to shine or farther away views? Oh, that's a good question. Kind of depends on the water clarity, um, but hmm, yeah. It, I'm Some, not sure. Sometimes it's good to look at like the Argus. I mean, not right now, but um, <laughs> you can see like it looks like almost like a flashlight being shown on the seafloor. There's actually a perfect moment for it here. We got sorry to interrupt, but yeah. we've got Hercules. There's that that dark wall in front of us. There mm -hmm. is 15 meters out. And our light is barely hitting it. Obviously, it's dark, but... Yeah. And no, no high beams. We've got all the lights on, mm -hmm. pretty much. And uh, if there was extra light and the video guy didn't know about it, he'd be angry. <laughs> because if you ask the video guy about light, his answer is always we more. Get down there a little more. bit there, Jake. Adam, can you give it a, a, an estimate of the geological age of the seamount based on what you've seen so far or what you know? Yeah, so there's a couple options. The kind of prevailing thought at the, at the moment is that these are 114 million years old, Cretaceous age. It's based on their kind of proximity to the mid-pack or mid-Pacific mountains to the west. Um, and an alternative is that they might be a bit younger, like uh, 30 million or so, similar to the age of the uh, Hawaiian seamount chain at, at this latitude. Um, but based on what we've seen, I think so far, I think I'm thinking more of the former uh, Cretaceous age. Uh, but we're going to do uh, some age dating some examination of the iron manganese crust to try and get a better constraint on that. These guys one, are really lined up. One Come thing on. we can say is that I would say most of, or all of the seamounts are of the same age, more or less, in geologic time, right? Thank you. Bridge now. Sorry, I cut you off. We step five zero meters, bearing zero four five. Thank you. It's a little strange that this guy is built on a little piece of rubble. Yeah, I think it was last dive when we were getting to the top of the last seamount. See, some corals had chosen poorly, and <laughs> and the rock had tumbled. This one looks all right. So really wide. 
Can we maybe um, pause the ship for, to yes. get collect a rock? Um, my refresh button was off on Grafana, and we blew past the depth. We oh, and so at. I think the last rock is just from the top, so we can cruise around up here. Um, and uh, you know, wait till we see it. So we, we're actually. This is a good place for angular stuff too. It is. Um, yeah, so we're pretty close uh, to the summit. There's still some relief you can see in Argus, and I'm not sure beyond that, but definitely towards the top. And there's plenty uh, to grab here, right? So wherever wherever the ship next stops would be. Okay, I just it's paused it, but I think. Now. But I can keep moving on to get more towards the, the center of this, if you like. Whichever. Has, uh, I don't think I've been awake for most of the summits. Have they been loose rocks up there? Or has it been hard to find a rock at the summit? I Sometimes would call this was, the summit. There's just some angular bits that are sticking out from it. but. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's keep the pause then. And, and uh, Are you off to the... Which way is Argus swinging? Uh, Argus is continuing to swing that zero seven zero move. Yeah. Um, we we could keep going up if you want and see sure. if there's anything else. I mean, we have time. Yeah, I don't want you to get behind, and uh, I feel like we're going to see more of this as we move around. Okay, so we'll step step more towards the top. Sure. And then see what we up? have. It looks like it'll be flat enough that we could go the the longitudinal axis of it. Yeah. Kind of. Make a note that there's good rocks here, though. Bridge nav. We'll do five zero meters, zero four five. Thank you. Also, keep your eyes out for uh, dead sponges that look like they are starting to turn black. Do you want another collection of that? Right. Look at this. God, it's gorgeous. You want the lasers on or off for this shot? Uh, let's flip them on. Yeah. Looks like the Ferrea Ferrea sponges. Yeah. Some type of Ferrea. Adam, a follow up on that seamount age question. One of our viewers says, "Would it, wouldn't it, uh, the age correlate with the mount to the north of it? That's part of the Hawaiian island chain." So yeah, so that's you come to zero, one four, option. So if if these were related to the magmatism of the Hawaiian chain, then yes, that's the where that uh, younger thirty million or so year age comes from. Uh, but there's a possibility that these seamounts were here well before the Hawaiian chain formed. So if they're of 114 million year old age, they form some 3,000 miles from here, rode on the ocean crust or with the ocean crust, and just happened to be right in this general location as the uh, you know the Hawaiian chain was was being built. Very cool flows. So the chemistry should tell us if they were, um, if they're related to the the Hawaiian chain or related more closely related to the Mid Pacific Mountains. This is a good shot. You can see those particles, and that fan is set up really well to catch it. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. and that is a uh, kind of an east to west kind of flow. That's a cool view, seeing the marine snow kind of flowing right through it. Yeah. That's a massive coral. Be cool to measure like particles on either side, see how, how effective oh, yeah. it is at traffic and stuff. Yeah. Very cool.
We have a question about corals. If one of the branches is knocked off or dropped, will those polyps survive and potentially form a new colony or will they perish? And I believe most I saw perish, yeah. But coral can reproduce by fragmentation and budding. So I think kind of maybe it depends on what the critical amount was. Yeah, I would think that it wouldn't be able to establish in a place that would be uh, good for collecting food if it just broke off. So it, I don't, I don't think it would die immediately, but it wouldn't be as well set up as these up in the water column. So we've seen that we've had some confirmation that the acanthogorgid we saw at 2,084 meters on our previous watch is likely a new depth record. Nice. Cool. That was the gold one. I'm pretty sure that we all get uh, a medal. For that. <laughs> <laughs> exciting. Yeah. yeah. Tote, yeah. ba tote bag as well. Yeah, there's tote some, bag. some governing bodies that I think award that. It's actually the uh, International Cribbage Council. That cool. <laughs> <laughs> they also govern um, depth extensions on certain organisms. It's a side hustle for yeah. them, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say International Quidditch or Cribbage? Cribbage. 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 Oh, it was the last dive. 1899. Oh, okay. oh, updated again this time. <laughs> oh, bless you. You got the <laughs> Thank button. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> button <in> <laughs> <laughs> Can someone talk about why the Argus cam looks different? No. <laughs> <laughs> because so we're, we're reliving. It doesn't, so doesn't look okay. different. You're different. We're reliving the 90s, right? Yeah, it's just an Instagram filter. Yeah, the, the camera on Argus uh, had a ground fault, so it's uh, not able to be restarted for the rest of this dive. But we're nearing the end of the dive, and when it comes on deck, 